Okay, this video is going to be on fieldwork techniques and all I've done for this, and you can do this at home, is I've just printed off the bit in the teacher's guide that gives the practical schedule that's in your practical book and some results. So these are the practicals that you need to know that you could be asked about in the exams. So these, both of these uh, techniques that we're just going to look at now are for uh, counting or estimating plants or sessile animals. It's no use if your animal is going to shoot out of your sampling area uh, quite quickly. So it's, it's no use for things like you know squirrels and voles and uh, spiders and beetles and what have you. It's got to be sessile animals really, or very slow moving ones. So you could you know potentially make a, a good count of snails, those sepia nemoralis. So. Um, abundance refers to the number of any species present, distribution refers to wh where they're found, I suppose. So equipment, um, the key um, piece of equipment for any ecologist is a, a quadrat and they come in a variety of sizes. They generally have grids on, so they're gridded quadrats and they generally have a hundred squares. So the ones that we use uh, are kind of quite large and they've got a hundred squares. So we've got two different methods that we would use. One is where the abiotic variables are uniform or you want to compare the abiotic factors, that's the non-living factors, in two different areas. And one is where you've got a change in an environmental factor in your habitat. So you need to be able to choose an appropriate one. So for example, if you were looking at the water content in soil or its drainage capability and you wanted to compare what was growing in one area well drained with another area not very well drained or a pond that has, you know, um, pH of 5 with a pond that has a pH of 7 with a pond that has a pH of 10, then you would you need to use this kind of um, technique. So, if you are doing that kind of uh, sampling, you need to do it randomly. You need to do random sampling. So you would set up a pair of axes and use random numbers to find coordinates for your quadrat and then put your quadrat down. Again, sort of consistency to make it a fair test. If you always place the bottom left hand corner of your quadrat at the coordinate that would enable you to compare. Uh, methods for taking region readings if you're doing something like a plantain or a dandelion, you might be able to count the number of plants in your quadrat. So here's my quadrat here. And I could take that whole area and say I've got one, two, three, four plants. Or you've got a grid of 10 by 10 squares. So, you know, you wouldn't count every grass plant. That would be ridiculous you would count how many squares it covers and convert that into a percentage cover. Again, you know, it's it's tricky because plants don't cooperate and they don't fill necessarily, you know, so obviously this is a one and that's a one, you know, that's a whole, covering a whole square, but this is just covering most of it and this is covering hardly any of it, so you need a rule. So. The rule in this case is the square is only counted if it's more than half covered. So in this example, and it's 
in the teacher's guide, you can work it out yourself, it tells you the cover's 9%. You could also use uh, what's called an uh, abundant uh, abundance scale. So you could use an ACK4 scale. So you could say, oh yeah, this is abundant. This is common. This is frequent. This is only found occasionally. This is found rarely. And there are some kind of percentage guidances for the ACK4 scale, and you, know, you can use that as well. So it's um, it's, a, it's a variation on this kind of percentage. That's quite quantitative. This is not quantitative. This is qualitative. It's a judgment call. You could do percentage frequency, so you just count how many squares the plant appears in and express it as a percentage, but it's not very accurate because, of course, if you've got one plant and it covers a number of squares, it comes up as being quite frequent. You could actually count the plants, so things like dandelions, um, plantain, then you can actually count how many you've got in each square and write your number down and calculate a mean. And your density, of course, doesn't have to be a popular, you know, whole number, so you know, see it's for, you know, mean per. Uh, quarter meter quadrat is 4.6 because you've calculated an average. I wouldn't go too over the top on any uh, decimal places there. Uh, maximum one, I would have thought. So you can use it to measure population densities. And again, you'd be using this to compare two different areas. So if you're comparing two different areas, you're going to use this random number and either do the percentage cover do a frequency thing, where you do a percentage frequency or an ACK4 scale, or depending on your type of plant, you can actually count it and get the density. So that's kind of method one. Method two is where you've got a distinguishable change in the, in, in the environmental factor. So here, you might be looking at, so here in the example, it's going from woodland out onto a path. It could be going from uh, grassland. No, so you could use it to assess the uh, plants growing in long grass, going to mode area, going to a path, going to a mode area where you've got a change in the vegetation going across an area. And of course, the thing that we do like to use this for is if you're going down a rocky shore, there's a distinct change because the sea is there at low tide, but of course at high tide it's up here and it gradually creeps up there and gradually creeps back down again. So this area is more covered, more covered by water by a long, for a longer time and it shows then a distinct distinct patterns so it's a really good technique for seashore. So as you go along your transect you can do it in two ways again. So you can do a line transect where you effectively are sampling at intervals. So you put your quadrat down at intervals. Or you can do a belt transect which is where effectively you put your quadrat down there, then you put it 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 down there, and that of course is going to give you a much better picture than sampling at intervals. Again, these are only for plants and sessile animals, so you might be doing things like, you know, counting barnacles, limpets and dog whelks on your way down the seashore, or seaweeds, the different seaweeds. You're going to be counting plants moving out from your underneath your tree out into the grass and across a path. So presenting data, uh, we tend not to use uh, bar charts and theoretically you could, you could do a little bar for how many of each thing you found but here we've got some good old kite diagrams. So here we've got 
we've got a percentage area cover because you can use those same techniques you can use ACK4 scales, you can use percentage cover, you can use percentage frequency you can use plant numbers um, and then you plot them on either side so you get a nice symmetrical graph so you can see that we've got 50% 0, 50% we've got percentage cover Meadow grass at point zero covers 80, so we're plotting 40% that way, 40% that way. At the at metre five, we've got 60% meadow grass, plotting 30% that way, 30% that way. And it gives these beautifully shaped graphs which show really clearly that our meadow grass was covering a lot of area and going to nothing, and our moss was starting off very little and then as we moved away from the tree uh, getting more and more and bracken had a little bulge there but fairly sort of steady numbers throughout and it just gives a really good uh, visual representation so the suggested strategies then so if you've got a habitat type that's uniform you're using this to compare you're going to use random quadrats, you're either counting your species or you're estimating the percentage area cover, percentage frequency or using the ACK4 scale. You could be looking at things like trampled and non-trampled, mown and unmown, clay soil, sandy soil, grazed, non-grazed. You can use this in ponds where you might be sampling um, the, the bottom flora or you might be taking out you know, a litre of water and looking at what's in it. You can be looking at environmental gradients, that's where you've got changing conditions. In that case you use belt or line transects. Add line in there. Again, you're using percentage area cover, percentage frequency, you're using ACK4, or you might be looking at the actual density by actually counting them, depending on what you're plant is grassland into wood under tree with dense canopy to open field across a path um, from going from high water to low water down the seashore you might be sampling across a small pond going from dry land into the open water and back out onto dry land or onto a marsh but anywhere where you've got an environmental change and of course in all of these cases if, especially in this sort of uniform one you might be looking at things like soil pH you might be looking at temperature you might be looking at wind speed so you might be looking at abiotic factors that affect uh, those um, the distribution of those organisms. Same with um, doing environmental gradients. It might be an environmental gradient on water availability or uh, exposure or light intensity or it might be um, a competition thing. So you might, if you're looking at going from under a tree out into the open then obviously the, your big competitor for light is your tree that's actually shading out the rest of your plants. Again, what can I say? Read the question. Read the question properly so that you know what it is that you're looking at.